The views I express today are mine and not those of the church, although they are shared by analysts both home, at home and abroad. You may agree or disagree, that's fine, but I felt I should sound a warning. The unhinged, belligerent public pronouncements over the last few days left me feeling so depressed uh, that I felt I couldn't continue with this talk. Then I saw a weird movie, Everything Everywhere All at Once, dealing with all kinds of conflict. Through much mayhem and special effects, it arrived at the answer, be kind. That put me in mind of today's reading. Love your neighbour as yourself. It applies equally well to countries as to individuals. It is the bedrock of diplomacy, the primary objective of which is the peaceful resolution of conflict. It guided me throughout my career. So for peace, love, in the broadest sense that Jesus meant, is the answer. Yet we are subjected to an almost daily deluge of demands that we detest and dread China. It is the policy of hate. It is the same irrational sinophobia that led to the white Australia policy, the yellow peril that took us into the war in Vietnam, and now the fiction of the China threat. The idea that China has ambitions of territorial expansion akin to those of Nazi Germany is scaremongering and arrant nonsense. China has not threatened to attack Australia or anywhere else. It has invaded no country. By contrast, the US has invaded countries in Latin America, Asia, notably Vietnam, and the Middle East, notably Libya, Iraq, and Afghanistan, causing the death of millions and further millions of refugees whom we subject to cruel and inhumane indefinite detention simply for the crime of seeking a better life. While we might criticise China's methods of maintaining control of its huge population and the cohesion of its vast territory, they are not examples of external military aggression. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, Jesus said, In everything, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. One of the basic Christian values that our leaders so loudly claim to defend. They have lost sight of the fact that as you do unto others, so shall be done unto you. Even so, China has not matched the naval exercises by US and Australian warships along its coastline. In contrast to Australia's hysterical reaction to a single Chinese warship in the Arafura Sea. Australia insists on going to war against China in order to keep open the South China Sea routes so that we can continue our trade. With whom? With China. It makes no sense. In any case, China has reached understandings with all claimants who have military bases in the South China Sea, Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam and the Philippines, and even Taiwan, that their competing claims should not be allowed to hinder mutually beneficial relations in other areas. Australia should adopt the same approach. So I am afraid, not of the threat from China, but of the war psychosis that grips the Australian body politic regarding China. 
I am also frightened by the complacency of the general public in Australia that seems to believe that what is happening to Ukraine cannot happen to us. It can and it will if Australia continues to position itself as an enemy of China. We're fortunate that China has not yet declared Australia to be its enemy. Ukraine is America's proxy in its war with Russia. As Congressman Adam Schiff said a few days ago, we aid Ukraine and her people so that we can fight Russia over there and we don't have to fight Russia here. Similarly, under the strategy of denial, Taiwan is to be America's proxy in its war against China, which is seen as the main challenge to US dominance of the rules-based order set up by and for the benefit of the US and its allies. Australia is inextricably intertwined economically and financially in the rules-based order. It apparently sees no option but to do everything to sustain United States dominance of that system. Like in Vietnam, Australia has placed itself in lockstep with America in its posture towards Russia and China. I'm not saying don't fight China because I'm a so-called China, China lover. It is because we cannot win. Whether China is benevolent or nefarious is irrelevant to a consideration of respective military capabilities. China is immensely more powerful than Australia. It makes no sense for Australia to place itself in the firing line. The US will not join us in the fray. It would use us as its proxy in its attempt to contain China. Australians generally seem complacently, but mistakenly, to believe that the ANZUS Treaty guarantees us America's protection. It does not. It only commits the US to consult on appropriate means of defence if Australia comes under attack. It contains no obligation to defend Australia if Australia goes on the attack. Every action of the United States, from the abrupt withdrawal from Afghanistan to its capture of the markets that Australia lost by standing up to China, to its stance of no direct involvement in the Russian-Ukraine war, and in its many policy statements, has demonstrated that, as President Biden said, the US acts only in its own interests. The US will not directly engage its own forces with war in China. Instead, it is equipping Taiwan to defend itself. It is taking the same approach to Australia, promising only the means of our own defence. An additional problem is that such promises are decades away from fulfilment. The US may also be coming to sense that its policy of goading China over Taiwan might not work. The Cross Straits Economic Framework Agreement signed by Taiwan and China in 2010 has institutionalised trade and economic relations between them. Taiwan's investment in China is now more than 194 billion US dollars. They both continue to be circumspect about swallowing the US bait. By getting Australia to share the United States red line in the Pacific, 
threatening the Solomons with dire consequences if it oversteps the mark with China, the United States appears to be manoeuvring Australia into the position of principal proxy in its war against China. The recent visit to Australia by a congressional delegation announced that American nuclear submarines would rotate through Australian ports until Australia gets its own, with the explicit objective of aiming them against China. Such a highly provocative action seems designed to elicit a comparable response from Beijing, further escalating the potential for a clash of force. With the present and permanent power imbalance between Australia and China, instead of trumpeting bellicosity at every turn, Australia needs to adopt a more circumspect approach and work out a mutually beneficial modus vivendi. This is the approach that has been adopted by all of our regional neighbours from whom we have isolated ourselves by our hostility to China. It's worth noting that while we were bullying the Solomons, the other Pacific Island nations were attending a conference organised by China to discuss the establishment of a centre for climate cooperation in the Pacific. From a non-Christian and purely selfish perspective, Australia should at least recognise the danger it has placed itself in and heed the dictum Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. In Luke chapter 6, verse 27, however, Jesus instruct us, instructed us to go even further. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. If China is our enemy, and I don't believe it is, but we could argue that for weeks, we would do well to follow Christ's teaching and defuse the present tensions as much as possible. We should open the door to dialogue by reaffirming our adherence to the One China Principle and offering assurance that we do not seek war with China. The Americans could hardly object since President Biden himself gave such assurances however disingenuously, in his video link with President Xi on the 18th of March. Meanwhile, all people of Christian principle should make it clear to our political leaders that the Australian people are opposed to war and wish to seek a way for peace. The anti-war movement created the impetus for Australia's withdrawal from the Vietnam War. It could work again, but it needs to get underway now before the next war begins. We have been told that if we want peace, we must, must prepare for war. I say, if we want peace, we must prepare for peace. Let us pray that the peace of Christ may be with us all.